Year after year, the Super Bowl starts at 6.30 Eastern Time. But if you really think about it, 6.30 is a bizarre time to start a game. No other game in the entire NFL season starts at that time. And no other major sporting league holds their championship at that time. Did you ever stop and wonder why the NFL starts their championship game at 6.30 and how we got to that point? This is the story of how the NFL first decided to play their championship at this somewhat odd time and how it's stuck ever since. Back in 2014, Gawker posted a chart about what time the Super Bowl starts every single year. At Super Bowl 1 in Los Angeles, the game started at 4.15 Eastern. And then, something you might not expect happened. The game times for the Super Bowls over the next decade got earlier and earlier. Normally they'd start around 3 o'clock, but Super Bowl 5 started at 2 o'clock, and Super Bowl 10 started at 2.14. Up until Super Bowl 11, with the exception of the first Super Bowl, every single Super Bowl started before 4 o'clock. And this included Super Bowl 8, which started right around 3 o'clock. I made a video about that Super Bowl if you want to check it out. But now let's zoom out of this graph a bit because there's a very clear divide between the first 11 Super Bowls and every Super Bowl from 1978 and on. From 1967 to 1977, the latest a Super Bowl started was 4.15. From 1978 until today, no Super Bowl has ever even started that early. And it's likely that a Super Bowl will never start that early again, unless London or some other European city hosts the game. At Super Bowl 11 in 1977, the game started at 3.50. And Super Bowl 12, we got a 6.17 start time. So what gives? Well, CBS was the broadcast host for Super Bowl 12, and my guess is that they noticed something. At the end of the day, it's about money. And the advertisements were the big money makers. This was before Super Bowl ads became the juggernaut that they are today. I made a couple of videos about that if you want to check that out. But here's a graph showing the cost of Super Bowl advertisements from Super Bowl 1 to Super Bowl 11. You're noticing an incline on a year-to-year -year basis in how much a 30-second ad costs. But there are certain years where the price rises by a lot, and there are certain years where the price doesn't rise that much. So here's a graph showing the percentage increase year-to-year. -year. Now keep in mind that I'm starting between Super Bowl 2 and Super Bowl 3, because the first ever Super Bowl was broadcast on both CBS and NBC, so I'm starting from the first Super Bowl, where one network had the exclusive rights. The five smallest increases came when this Super Bowl was no later than the last one. The advertising price from Super Bowl 3 when compared to Super Bowl 2 was 0.9% higher. And that game started at the same time. The advertising price from 5 when compared to 4 actually decreased by 7.2%. And that game started more than 90 minutes earlier at 2 o'clock. The advertising price from Super Bowl 9 when compared to Super Bowl 8 was 3.4% higher, and that game started half an hour before. And the advertising price from Super Bowl 10 when compared to Super Bowl 9 was just 2.8% higher, and that game started about 45 minutes before. Conversely, there were four times where the advertising price rose by double-digit percentage points. Three of those four times, the game started more than half an hour later than the previous game. There was a clear trend happening here. The later the game, the more money that advertisers are willing to spend on a 30-second spot. There's another th golf tournament held every year that conflicts with the Super Bowl that CBS holds the right to. I'm not sure, and I couldn't find any article or research about either theory of mine. But CBS did not want to air Super Bowl 12 between the Dallas Cowboys and Denver Broncos early. They wanted the game to air in prime time. The only problem? No other Super Bowl had ever aired in prime time before. And amazingly enough, when CBS contacted the NFL at first about the possibility of moving the Super Bowl back a few hours, the league was really reluctant. In a way, the league had a reason to be reluctant even though it looks ridiculous in hindsight. Over the previous decade, 
The Super Bowl had gone from an experiment between two competing leagues to a game that football fans had to watch, to a game that attracted non-football fans as well, to a spectacle where the country seemingly shut down. The NFL had a formula that was working. Playing the game in the late afternoon was working for the league. So why mess it up? Even though CBS wanted the game to be played in prime time, the NFL didn't want it. But money talks. And CBS was persistent that the Super Bowl be played in prime time. To the point where CBS paid the NFL an additional bonus so that the game would start sometime around 6.15 Eastern. Remember how I said that previous Super Bowls always started at 4.15 or earlier? For Super Bowl 12, CBS wouldn't even start their pregame coverage until 4.30. That's right. The pregame for this Super Bowl would start later than any other Super Bowl's kickoff had ever started. But now that the NFL had some cash from CBS to move the game back, the NFL complied. The result of this? The first ever primetime Super Bowl would become the most popular Super Bowl of all time up until that point. And it would do so by a long shot. Let's look at the numbers from this game starting on the side of CBS. While specifics about the details of what they paid the NFL are unknown, they easily made their money back. A 30-second ad cost a record $162,300. That's roughly a 30% increase on what a 30-second ad cost at Super Bowl XI, and roughly a 48% increase on what a 30-second ad cost at Super Bowl X, which was the last Super Bowl that CBS held before this one. As for the NFL, whatever the records I mentioned before were regarding television ratings at the Super Bowl, they were blown out of the water for this game. The average television audience was roughly 79 million viewers. The total television audience was over 102 million viewers. The game was seen in an average of 34.4 million households. And the game drew a 47.2 Nielsen rating. Earlier that day, on January 15, 1978, the Wilmington Star News predicted that this game could shatter every record in the book and that the country could shut down. They were right. It didn't even matter that the game itself wasn't that good, as the Cowboys led by three possessions midway through the third quarter, and Broncos quarterback Craig Morton had about the worst day imaginable. The game was a hit. After that game, no Super Bowl ever started before 4 o'clock again. When CBS got the rights to their next Super Bowl at Super Bowl XIV between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Los Angeles Rams, the game started at roughly the same time. By the mid-80s, no more Super Bowls started before 5 o'clock. And every Super Bowl since 1991 has started after 6.15. It's been this way ever since, and will continue to be this way for the foreseeable future. What CBS and the NFL did in 1978 changed the future of the Super Bowl forever. By pushing the game out of the afternoon and into prime time, it elevated the price of advertisements and elevated the ratings that the game received. This agreement between CBS and the NFL was the true definition of a win-win. So if you ever wondered why the Super Bowl started around 6.30 each year, you know who to thank. Whatever the reason behind CBS's motivation for warning the game at that time, this decision shaped the future of the big game forever.